definitely crazy the different lights lighting it puts off. Those are grow light bulbs and these are the LED grow light bulbs. Good morning modern steaders. It's that time of the year where we're starting our seed plants inside. We got our celery growing. Tomorrow we're going to start our tomatoes and peppers. Our problem is we only have one grow light and when we're starting our plants you need to raise and lower it so the light is only inches away from your seedlings because if the lights too high your plants start getting very long and lengthy so what we got this year is we got another grow light that we're gonna work on modifying to work for our situation I like to be able to adjust mine we have a grow light strips here does that smell good Pluto? huh? huh? Just silly. We have grow light strips. There's three of them in a pack. They're interconnected. We're going to make it so these are adjustable. I'm going to have the lights in our Amazon shop. And there's a link in the description down below for our Amazon shop. But one of the big reasons we're going with this style is they're only $24. And that way it's small, compact. If we can make them adjustable, they'll be a lot easier to store and a lot better price and that incandescent one and even better they're going to use a lot less electricity so in the long run that's going to save us a ton of money right there in our light bill let's get to work and i'll show you how we're going to set these up get this darn cat what are you doing yeah you foolish cat What are you doing? Huh? You're crazy. For starting our seeds, we use these metal racks. They work out awesome. We've been using them for quite a few years now. I recommend them for starting seeds. They're fairly inexpensive. We picked these ones up on sale, I think, for 60 bucks this year. It's crazy what you can find on for sale sometimes. But what I want to do is I'm going to measure the width. 18. How long are they? Just under four feet. The supervisor's on the job. We're in good shape now. I'm going to be using 3 8 plywood. I'm using 3 8 because I have a sheet of it at the house. If I had to go buy the plywood, I'd buy quarter inch plywood. I think I got a small piece around here. So 3 8 that I have is just regular plywood, 3 8 thick. Quarter inch is a little bit more finished. I told the girls I'd save this piece for them for any art project, so I'm not going to use it. I could, but I'll be nice, and we'll let the girls have that piece. But this would just be a lot smoother. It would weigh less, and it would do the job, and it's like 10 bucks a sheet cheaper. But we have the 3 8 I'm going to measure up 18 inches. I'm just going to use my chalk line, but you know what? i got a better idea. Let's use our drywall T-square. One of the things I really like about my battery operated circular saw is it doesn't make a huge dusty mess. I've noticed the sawdust stays more in one small area where if I use my big Milwaukee one it blows it everywhere. Which works really well for me because we're doing a lot of our projects this time of the year in the basement. All right, it's set the depth so I'm not cutting my concrete floor. Now, if that was my corded one, I'd have a huge sawdust mess. 
All right, now I want to notch it so that it fits around the legs. Let's mark two inches. Two inches. I had a new toy sent over for my birthday. I wanted to say thank you. I've been using this all week long. It's been working awesome. Can't get over the battery life. We're gonna use it today. Sand the edges a little bit, get down any sharp burrs. We have a gallon of white paint left over from working on our concrete countertop desk and the crates that we need to finish up. So we're gonna use some of that white paint today. If you haven't seen our concrete countertop desk project, I'll put a link to that playlist right here. That was a fun project and it came out pretty nice looking. We're happy with it. Olivia loves using it, our new computer desk. The nice part about keeping your roller and brush in a bag, it stays nice and soft and it still works. We've been using this roller now for all of our projects and it hasn't dried out yet. The best part about that is, means we get to save money. And we're throwing away a lot less material. All right, so we're Painting this white so this will help reflect the light of the grow lights back onto the plants. While we wait for this to dry, let's go check and see if the maple trees have any sap flowing yet. It's about 40 degrees yesterday, the sap didn't run. It didn't get that cold last night, so I don't know if the sap will be running today, but let's look and see. My guess is no. I ended up having to get blue lids. Everybody was all out of white lids. There's a little bit, I mean a little bit of sap in there. But it's the start. We just need to be patient. That's not the easy part. I take four pieces of small diameter chain that are, let's see, we're gonna want them 13 inches long. All right, this is how we're going to attach it to our shelving units and be able to adjust it. Plywood has a natural bend to it, especially once you get it wet from paint or anything. 
you're gonna get that natural bend like this. And the reason for that is there's a bend to it is because the way plywood's cut, they take the tree and they slice it around like this to make a veneer or however thick they need so they're like paling the tree almost like an onion around so it's got that natural curved tendency to it so once you get it wet it already has that memory and it wants to go back that way i don't know if you needed that information or not but i think it's kind of fun just a nice little tidbit to know and i can go oh now i know why my plywood wants to do that that's the natural way it's growing so there's a couple of ways you could remedy that situation. You could use some pressure treated one and a quarter by one and a quarter stock. They make regular kiln dried like two by four material, but it's a square stock. You can go and buy that. If you have scrap kicking around, you can use that. What I'm using is I have some rip offs. They're probably about an inch thick. This is the leftover remnants from the form we made for the concrete countertop. So we're going to use that. So you just need to use scrap wood to fix this problem. I'm cutting mine four feet long because I can. The scrap wood that we're using are long enough to do that. You don't need to go four feet wide. A couple of feet would do it. Mine are three quarters of an inch thick. Yep. Biggest reason I wanted to know that is I gotta find screws now. Hmm. Let's see what we got. I have a mess back here. Inch and a quarter, inch and five eighths, nails. Screws. These ones short enough. I don't know if we get enough. That would work if we had enough of them. No. These are inch and a quarter. Not gonna work. All right. I don't have long enough screws, but I do have a staple gun that's loaded with three quarter inch long staples. Let's use this. Otherwise, I would be using screws. I'm gonna glue this on. I'm lining up our boards on the edge groove, and then we're gonna staple them. When you're stapling something that has a bow in it, you either want to work from one end to the other or from the middle out. That way you know you can suck it down as you go. If you start on both ends and then work in, you're going to be fighting that because the ends are going to be nailed and there's not going to be any place for the middle to push out to. So if you start in the middle, it'll push it and work it that way or stop one end. Now we're going to take our lights. They have double-sided sticky tape on them. I'm going to work. I'm going to unplug it now. But this is what I'm thinking for a pattern. A diagonal. This one can come up like this, or like this. And if we decided we needed to add more strips, like say one here and one here, you can continually keep adding on to the system. All right, let's 
flip it over and we'll work on how we're going to hang it. Let's mark in four inches from the edge. Now I can use my inch and a quarter screws, take my small chain, One of the reasons I really like this grow light system is it's customizable to fit your needs. So I'm going to make it, let's see, it's three inches in. So I'm going to make it so we have adjustable hooks so we can easily adjust the height of the light to fit what we're growing at the time. Okay, let's raise this end up a little bit. Now comes the moment of truth. Now if you had a bunch of these built, you could just plug them all in together and only have to have one plug. Let's see how it works. Look at that. Let's put the celery under there and we'll see how it likes it. Find out in a few days. The directions of the LED light say to keep it 11 inches to 27 inches away from the plant. That seems like a lot versus the old grow lights. But it must be to do with the different light spectrums is my guess. My opinion on grow lights is they're a great tool. They're not the end all answer to growing. Um, I think they're a great tool for starting your plants inside. I don't think your food should be grown under these, or I don't think my food should be grown under grow lights. They're missing something. The creator made the creation to run off of the sun. And whether you get the right light spectrum or not, they're not supplying our plants with something. That's the way I feel. So I think they're a great tool, but I don't think they're the answer. I don't think growing indoors under grow lights is the end all be all to everything. If you need to use them for winter time and stuff like that for growing your plants and starting them, I think that's what they're for. They're just another tool. It's definitely crazy the different lights, lighting it puts off. Those are grow light bulbs and these are the LED grow light bulbs. I really like how you can get a wider area with this setup versus this light. You got to be directly under it for your plants to thrive. If it's off to the side, you can see the plants right here in the center do amazing off to the side it makes a huge difference so we're going to keep an eye on the celery plants interesting to know what is the different watt and what's our electrical bill going to be now from using this light versus the LEDs I'm excited to try out the new grow light system we live in northern New Hampshire we're in growing zone 4b so that means we don't get to put our plants out till way later. So we like to give them the best jump start we can. So we like to start the celery, our tomatoes, our peppers super early. We're going to be starting our tomatoes and peppers tomorrow in soil blocks. And then once they outgrow the medium soil blocks, we have a large soil block maker. We'll put those in. And we'll be eating, B we'll be eating BLTs with pasture-raised bacon that we grow in here at Lumna Acres the same time as the people in the southern part of the United States. So just because you got a longer growing season doesn't mean we can't get a jump start on you too. If this is your first time stopping over the channel, thanks. If you're not subscribed yet, now's a perfect time to go down below, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell while you're there. That'll turn on notifications and I would say about 50% of the time YouTube will let you know when we upload a video, go live, or post something to our community tab. So the best thing to do is remember we upload a video every day at 6 a.m. 
And you can also go over to lumnaacres.com. I'll put a link for that in the description down below. Sign up for our newsletter, read our blog posts, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.